Welcome back. Well, today I'm joined by Elsie Addington, who is here on behalf of United. Well, Elsie, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm pretty good, Lisa. I'm pretty good. How are you? Good, good. And I know you're a very busy woman, back-to-back -back meetings, as always. So we'll just jump right into it. So this time, we're going to talk a little bit about the committee meetings and also you've got a couple of other items on here. So I love it. So go ahead. Well, uh, as you as you know, Lisa, I'm the uh, United Chair for our Governing Docs Committee. And uh, actually, I'm supposed to be updating the village a little bit more often than I do because I'm always talking about something else. But anyway, um, I want people to know that uh, all people are welcome to come and, and join in at the govern, Governing Docs Committee. The committee itself is four, um, four directors and four advisors. I have four of the best advisors in the world. They're just awesome. And so it's a committee of eight. And then everybody else that wants to come can sit in what I call the peanut gallery when we're doing it. It's just sort of like sitting, if, if, you're, if you were in a room having a meeting and some people have to sit around the edges, they can't sit at the table because the table's for the committee. And I, on Zoom, of course, I call it the peanut gallery, but it's the place that's not on the panels where people are talking back and forth and making decisions, but they can listen and they can submit questions. So, um, and we're, we're kind of going into combination meetings, I think, but I'm just gonna kind of give the directions for both. Um, if uh, any Laguna Woods owner or resident, you have to be an owner or a resident, not just, uh, you know, your Uncle Charlie wants to come in and watch. But if you're an owner or a resident, you're welcome to participate in committee meetings and submit comments or questions regarding virtual committee meetings using one of three options. Obviously, if it's going to be a physical meeting, you can just go watch it. But otherwise, um, and I think we're going into combinations. I know we did one recently where you can do Zoom or come in. But either way, I'm going to give you this information um, that you're welcome to submit uh, uh, questions um, or comments, one of three methods. One's via email, and this is for virtual or in-person. You can send an email to meeting at vmsinc.org. That's meeting at vmsinc.org any time before the meeting is scheduled to begin or during the meeting. We have a very busy behind the scenes staff that shags all this stuff for us. And please use the name of the committee on the subject line of the email. Name and manner number must be included. That's if you've ever been to a meeting before in a committee or the open board, the member has to say who they are and where they live. Okay. Um, that's for the records so we know that they're authorized to be speaking. And also they can call 949-268-2020. Oh, I hate that number because it reminds me of 2020 and 2020 was so gloomy. But it is, it's 949-268-2020, beginning one half hour before the meeting begins and throughout the remainder of the meeting. You must provide your name and manner again. Or you can join the, the Zoom meeting um, from the calendar on the website. If uh, you, know, you, you go to calendars on the website and go to uh, all, you, find your, you, you can figure this out. You find, go to calendars, find the meeting you want and click on the Zoom. Um, there's a little Zoom blurb that you click on and that'll take you in if it's a Zoom. Um, now what we, we talked about, our last meeting was on December 17th. I'm all, December 17th, June 17th, <laughs> I'm almost positive. Oh, I can look at, it was June 17th at one o'clock, oh. 30. So uh, at that meeting, this is your update, big excitement. We reviewed the uh, financial requirements for members and we've been doing this for, uh, this has been the second month we've been doing this. And uh, there were some concerns and this isn't, we didn't make any substantive changes, but these are more tweaks like um, they're, they're just more tweaks, like in timing, in terms of, uh, and whether or not something is a liquid asset or not. We just clarified a few little things in the requirements. Again, all these are available on your website. 
and the updated uh, versions will be there really soon, but it's nothing, you can still rely on the computer, I mean on the website because um, these are just tweaks, just okay. tweaks. So mostly it's misunderstandings between the escrow companies and the real estate agents versus us in terms of uh, a few little things. And so um, that's all, and Pamela Bashline from our community services always does a bang up job. She works very closely with governing docs and of course knows more about our governing documents than anybody does. Oh, and by the way, your governing documents are easy to read, sort of, and they're always available online under United, then go, when you go to documents, go to United, and then shoot down towards the bottom and it's called governing documents. And there's only three or four of them. One's the occupancy agreement, one is um, bylaws, and uh, I forget, I'm the chairman of governing docs and I forget what the third one is. <laughs> so, <laughs> been a little busy lately. So we, we count on Pamela Bashline and her crew to keep us, uh, keep us on the straight and narrow and in compliance, and she's fabulous. We also talked about the status of our committee goals, again, and I know I mentioned this before, but we do that on a, a monthly basis. We look at the status, and staff has made a really nice chart for us to uh, follow that shows us the, you know, the update, where it's, where it's at now, what's been done during the month. And the 21, 21 committee goals, and, um, we, one, oh, one of those goals is kind of interesting, and I think I mentioned this before about uh, active resolution, resolutions uh, being accessible on the website, and this kind of ties in with resolutions prior to 2006. Again, uh, staff is working on these. Um, we, uh, anyway, there are a lot of, we, we have these resolutions. Some of them we can't use because of copyright problems. I mean, we can't make them public. And some of them, uh, prior to 2006, there's something magic about 2006, and I just forget it right now because the whole leisure world thing went away, right? A long, longer time ago than that. So anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, we're looking at these old resolutions and see if they're still valid. And if they're still valid, <clears throat> we either make them available or uh, do something with them that doesn't give us copyright problems and um, if they are invalid then we uh, we need to invalidate them and get them into a separate pile but that's a, a big process because we haven't put everything online yet you know I mean most of it's online but this records maintenance stuff is a big big deal but you know slowly surely slowly surely oh and uh, the we're also uh, looking at uh, director SOPs standard operating procedures we really you're really job descriptions. So we're doing job descriptions uh, for the different aspects of being a director and hopefully those will be available um, before just as the next the newly elected officers and the newly elected directors are taking uh, taking office and getting sworn in hopefully we'll have these um, there, there are, are things available already but we're just trying to refine them and like say what does a, a, a chair of a committee do, what is a, uh, well, signing off on, um, these are requirements under Davis Sterling, we have to sign off on resale packages, what are all the different duties of uh, a director, uh, and then the director's like a job description, and then we do have standard operating uh, procedure write-ups for each one of these little um, other tasks that they have to do. Um, we, we, we review sublease requirements, um, there's one page explanation of Resident procedures, that'll happen when I die, but it could happen. Um, future agenda items, uh, we, we, these are all things we do on a, a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, talked about the director SOP. Uh, oh, and reviewing subleasing requirements, okay. Oh, and, so that's basically what we do. Sometimes um, uh, people bring stuff to us and <clears throat> we, <clears throat> we decide if a proposed change or a proposed form or a proposed law is in accordance with, because you know, it isn't just our governing documents. We have to make sure the governing documents are in turn in line with uh, state and federal law. We right. can't just make up any old rule uh, and call it a, you know, call it a governing document or calling it a resolution. It has to be in alignment with other laws as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I would like to mention, because I know, I mean, when I come on here every month or every so often, it's like, I know it sounds like a, a really laugh a minute job, and it is. It's a lot of fun being a director. It has its challenges, um, but I really would recommend it to anybody that likes to know how things work and to be part of the solution. It's easy to be negative all the time and just complain, but it's uh, kind of different to discipline yourself to, uh, you know, run for the board, get on the board, be on the board, get along with your uh, coworkers, get along with staff. And you, the reward is that you get to find out how this big place works. You know, how the landscape connects to the uh, re-roofing, connects to the uh, slurry finishing, uh, connects to the tennis court. It all is our community, but it's made up of a whole lot of fascinating parts. Right. So we on the boards would strongly urge residents to get involved in the election process. And that's the other thing. Talk to your candidates. Once we do have candidates, find out where they're at. Are they people that get along with other people? Are they people that... Uh, have some some good constructive ideas um are they you know normal we are uh, uh, let's see involved in the lecture process and consider oh and we would like you to consider if you'd like to share the governance of this lovely community we live in and run for the direct and run for director united third and mutual 50 will be accepting applications during the month of july for, so more, for more information Watch your inbox for your what's up in the village or call a director from your mutual. Right, right. Well, that's good. So for the month of July, they're accepting the applications. And then when do they actually go into effect? But the applications? Oh, the applications have to all be in by, I believe, July 30th. And okay. once the, application, once the uh, applications are in and it's been ascertained that they're, you know, eligible to, to run, it, it basically have to be warm and breathing and you have to be an owner occupant and uh, you cannot have been convicted of a felony, but there are very few other requirements actually. So, um, but after they ascertain, but you have to be in full compliance with everybody on your uh, bills. Like if you owe rechargeable services or back assessments or um, traffic fines, any of that stuff, take care of that before you apply because you have to be up to date on all your payments. Okay. And um, yeah, that, that's about it. And then those go in at the end of July. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not 100% on when the election is. Okay. All I'm right. not 100% on that. But that information is all going to be all over what's up in the village on the internet. Right. Um, it's, I'm, it's sure, I'm sure we'll be sharing information as well, too. So. I'm sure you will. I'm <laughs> sure you will. All right. Well, thank you very much for the update. I appreciate it. Well, I know it was really interesting, and I appreciate That's it. That's all right. You're, you're becoming the face of United. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time, though, Lisa. I totally appreciate it. It's just all a right. joy working with you every time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back.